And we are live. Hey guys, and welcome to our Peak DeFi Launchpad tutorial. My name is Jonas Mahmoud. I'm the Chief Communications Officer from Peak DeFi. And together with one of our analysts, Doreen Hein, today we are going to give you guys an update or a tutorial about the Peak DeFi Launchpad. Doreen, you want to say hello? <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome. Hi guys and welcome. Ooh, I hear me on the second screen. Sorry about that. Okay. Perfect, it works. I can see we're live. I can see we have a few viewers. One of saying Moin from Germany, so Moin. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I would say we are going to start with a little presentation. After that, we will show you our website and our launchpad. And at the end, we will have a special guest joining us for our today's call because we want to give you some extra information. So let me share my screen and let me start with the presentation. So today it's going to be about the Peak DeFi Launchpad. So if we, so the summary for today is I'm going to start with a little bit of a short introduction into Launchpads. What are Launchpads? Why are there Launchpads? What's the existence reason for a Launchpad? After that, we will switch to our Peak DeFi Launchpad website. Then we will go to the introduction of the first IDO because our First whitelisting started today, but we're going to explain to you later on what that is and how you can participate. And then at the end, we will have a little open Q&A session. And in between, after number three and number four as well, we will have our special guest as well. But he's going to join us a little bit later. So yeah, the first question is, what is a launchpad? A launchpad is a platform for crypto projects to offer their tokens for the first time to the public. Offered tokens usually come at a discounted price because tokens have to be distributed somehow. So a launchpad is a platform where you can participate as an investor in the early stages of a project. So what is the reason for launchpads? Because crypto projects have different stages of sales and investment rounds and launchpads are the first public sale of a token, which is very important. There's a first public sale. So launchpads usually... Yeah, your launchpads usually have a very important factor to keep in mind, and that is the tokenomics of a project. So what is the tokenomics and where do I find them? Tokenomics is a new word from crypto. Well, it comes from the crypto space. It's a new word within the crypto space. And it comes from the word economics, which is basically a part of a business plan. The economics in a business plan showcase how a business is going to intend to make profit and how the logic behind the profit works. So the tokenomics show you how a crypto project is going to make money with this project and how the token is being used, how the token is going to generate money, royalties, whatever, like an ROI for the investors. So tokenomics show, crypto, uh, show cryptocurrencies, are, uh, show how cryptocurrencies are being distributed and how they are used. And tokenomics can be always found in the white paper and they tell a lot about the project. So... Yeah, you can always check the white paper, see the tokenomics section, and then you can see, hmm, does it make sense? Does the fully diluted market cap make sense? Does the price make sense? All this information can be found within the tokenomics. So it's a very important part of every crypto project that you are going to do research about. So what sales and finance, uh, finance uh, stages exist in the crypto space? So the first uh, phase that exists is a seed sale. Then comes a private sale. Then there's launchpads for IDOs and IGOs. Oh, I see I still have a German translation in here. Sorry for that. And then there's a public say and public token listing. Doreen and me, uh, Doreen and I, we did the same webinar in German a few days ago. I just translated the slides. Sorry about this typo here. So the first investment phase of a token of a crypto project is always a seed sale. The seed sale is where the crypto project announces its business idea to the very first, very enclosed group of investors, and they get the very best price for a project. They get the very best price, and after that, they have a more open round for private sales and to a larger group of investors, maybe through an inner circle of a mastermind somewhere. So a private sale is also something where only a few people have access. And then there's the launch pads. Launchpads are the first public stage of a sale of an investment round for crypto projects. And in the past, they were ICOs, IEOs, IPOs, IGOs now, and IDOs. So an IDO is an initial DEX offering, initial decentralized exchange offering. An IGO 
is an initial game offering because uh, for blockchain games because there are also some other uh, launchpads out there which offer gamification tokens so they use igos then we have the ieos the initial exchange offerings and then we have the icos which were very popular back in 2017 the initial coin offerings i remember that i participated in a lot of icos back in 2017 so in 2017 icos were like the the biggest hype ever and now it changed over the last couple of years a little bit so nowadays it's kind of like seed sale private sale rounds and then launch pets is where usually investors get in touch with the crypto projects for the very first time and after that you have the public sale or the public token listing of a token on a regular exchange on a dex on a centralized exchange like on just on any regular public exchanges so that everybody can buy it with no restrictions or no requirements in order to participate with the project our pick defa launchpad uses ideos so when we talk about projects on our launchpad we talk about ideos so the pick defa launchpad has a tier system as all the other launchpads out there we have a tier system containing five different tier levels and we have a guaranteed allocation so it doesn't matter in which tier you are, you will always get a spot with our allocation. I try to visualize the idea of a launchpad and how a tier system works a little bit. Sorry if it's like a little bit of like a cheap visualization, but I think you can get the idea of how it works and how you can understand it. So with our PD5 tier system, we have the five different tier levels. And then in this example, we have a project, no name needed, just a random project, that wants to sell 100,000 tokens. So we have the five different tier levels where our investors can participate in, depending on how many peak tokens they stake on our launchpad. And we will give each tier level a certain weight, a certain pool weight. And then we will allocate certain amount of tokens to this specific pool. In this example, our first pool has 2,000 tokens, second pool, 8,000 tokens, third pool, 10,000 tokens, fourth pool, 20,000 tokens, fifth pool 60,000 tokens. This is an example for this name project with 100,000 tokens. And now we have the number of investors who participate in each different tier level. So in this example, we have 1,000 investors in the first tier level, 500 in the second, 200 in the third, 100 in the fourth, 10 investors in the fifth level. And now we have the example number of tokens that are able to be, uh, to be purchased by these different investors, because we have 2,000 tokens on the first year level divided by 1,000 investors. So this was calculated two token each, then 16 token each, 50 token each, 200, uh, 200 token each, and 6,000 token each. So it is in your interest that you get a high tier level or a tier level as high as possible in order to get the biggest allocation in order to have the maximum investment that you can probably have. So in this example prices, sorry about the German word here. So this example, we had a seed sale price uh, of 10 cents, then a private sale price of let's say 20 cents. Then the IDO launch per price would be 40 cents and the public listing price later on will be $1. This is how you can imagine it. Like a crypto project always have, will always have a seed sale price, which is super cheap. Then a private sale price, then a still very attractive launch per price. And then there comes the public listing price. And of course, participants in our tier level one, they will not only have the, uh, the opportunity to buy tokens worth 80 cents. This is just like an illustration just for you to imagine how the tier systems work. The exact pool weight is written down on our website and we have a standard pool weight that we allocate for each project. But during the whitelisting, during the registration phases for each project, you will have the opportunity to register yourself for a project. And then we will see how many people have been registered with this project, how many people have been registered in this specific tier level. And then we can adjust the, the pool weights a little bit. If we see, for example, that there's a lot of investors in tier level one and two, then almost no investors in tier level three, but a lot of tier, uh, investors in level four again. And then we would see that maybe there would be an uneven balance of distribution within the tier level. So then we can adjust it before the sale starts so that every uh, that every investor has the most fair opportunity to participate and to buy the tokens. This is just the idea how you can imagine how our launchpad will work. 
And I think that's the first part of my presentation of how you can imagine how the Launchpad works. And now Doreen is going to show you our website and what you can click on the website and how it works and how you can navigate through the website. Doreen, you now have the permission to share your screen. Yes. So yeah, I will go through the website and yeah, try to explain it as simply as I can. So here in the header at first, we have here all social media channels. And here you can also click, there's a drop down menu. And you should definitely join this group here, the Peak DeFi Alerts channel, because here we will post like all the launchpad updates, when the projects will start, the whitelisting, et cetera, and also information about projects. So you should definitely join this group. And next to it, here's the staking button, but I will um, yeah, go into detail about staking later on. Then here's the apply for IDO. That's not that interesting because here only um, new projects can contact us and need to fill out a contact form. And after that, we will decide if we want to work with them or not. So that's not that interesting for you as an investor. Here you can then connect your wallet. So your MetaMask wallet. And yeah, that's all about that. Down here, we have currently a giveaway and you can simply click here on it. And yeah, I will write an email here. And simply you can here subscribe and you will come to this site. Here you have all the introductions, how you can participate in the giveaway. And yeah, you can collect your points. So by following, for example, our social media channels or share it with friends. And down here we have a referral link which you can use for that. And yeah, I think Jonas can give us also a little bit more details how everything works because it's, yeah, yeah more sure. his project. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm responsible for the giveaway and I decided to give the first prize to the first winner of the giveaway. We get 100,000 peak token. The second place will be 75,000 peak token. The third prize will be 50,000 peak token. And Doreen, can you scroll just a little bit up, please? Yeah. So sure. you have the different tasks that you can do. Follow us on Twitter, on Telegram, YouTube, and the Alert channel. This is to get a little bit of points. Like you can get like, I think it's up to 10 points that you can get through this system. And then every time when you refer a friend, you will get more points. One friend, when your friend just uh, comes on the website and uh, types in his email, and then another four points when he confirms his email. So if you have a YouTube channel, if you can do a little bit of marketing, if you want to do mar uh, marketing, you can actually get a lot of friends to join for the giveaway as well. And we will have up to 50 winners for the giveaway. So the first prize is 100,000 peak token, which is currently around five, uh, $5,000. So it's a big price for the first prize. And even the last prize will be around $200 worth of peak tokens. So the winners number one to 20 will be ranked accordingly to the contest ranks. Um, Dream, can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah, you can see it here. Because we have a kind of like a leaderboard of everybody who participated and the points. You can see number one is Kevin Beutler. He's a German, um, a German affiliate from Peak DeFi. And he has referred many people to the Peak DeFi Launchpad. That's why he got 1,644 points. But we think that there's still a lot of space uh, to more people. So yeah, if you want to share the giveaway, you can do that. And the first 20 people, they will have the guaranteed win. And after that, the winners number 21 to 50, they will be randomly selected through all participants. So we will have a list of everybody who participated. And every point that you accumulate is one ticket. And then we will have 30 winners randomly selected by the software from all the tickets who entered. So the more points we have, the more likely you will win in order to the contest. But also, if you are not reaching the first 20, then you also have a very high chance to win because you will have probably a lot of tickets anyway. So the giveaway is a... It's an opportunity. For, it's an opportunity for you where you can actually get uh, peak tokens for free between two hundred dollars and six thousand dollars. So we think that this is a very good opportunity for everybody to get a little bit of peak token as a start or as an entry. And then, yeah, if you get 
100,000 peak token, you will always or will automatically be in tier level three, which gives you a very good allocation for peak DeFi launchpad. So this is something you should think about it. And yeah, maybe the ring you can continue with the website and then the people can learn about the different tier systems and what I mean with tier level three. Yes. So um, if we go down here, you can first see here all the exchanges where you can buy the peak token, which you will need to participate in the launch pad. And if you want to know where you can buy the peak token, you can simply go here on CoinMarketCap and sc scroll down a little bit. And here you can see all the markets where you can buy it. So there are many, many more. You can just simply click here on see all markets. And yeah, you will have all the options where you can buy the peak token. And you should keep in mind that you need peak token on Binance Smart Chain. So you need BEP20 peak token because our peak token is listed on Ethereum and on Binance Smart Chain, but you actually need Binance Smart Chain peak token in order to participate on our launchpad. Yeah, that's very important. So you only need to switch in your MetaMask the networks. And yeah, send for example, if you have um, peak token on your Ethereum blockchain, you can yeah simply use a bridge, for example, and yeah, put it onto the um, Binance Smart Chain. So here are some texts here. First of all, is an about text about PD Pi and so in general and also the launch pad. That's not that interesting for now, but here we have our T system and that's very important. So we have here five tier levels as Jonas already explained. And for each tier levels, you need an, um, yeah, specific amount of peak tokens. Which you need to be, which you need to have in the staking process. Um, I will show you that in a minute. Uh, so, for example, here, if you stake 10,000 peak token, you will be in tier level one. And if you, yeah, stake 50,000 peak token, you will then be in tier level two. But for example, if you have like 49,000 peak token staked, you will still be in the tier level one. So you definitely have to stake um 50,000 peak token to be in the tier level two and yeah with the other tier levels it works the same way and now to come to the pool rates that's a bit difficult um, to understand and also to explain so you have to imagine it like um, if you add all those pool weights together this would be a total of 142 and um, this would be equal to 100 percent so you have to calculate it down. Um, yeah, how many t tokens will be um, distributed in each tier level? So yeah, it's yeah, not all projects or IDOs are the same. So with some projects we have an allocation of let's say one hundred thousand or maybe two hundred thousand, and you have to calculate it down to your tier level to see how many tokens will be available in this one specific tier level. And also we have on the tier level pipe, the VIP access. And that means that you have, yeah, like a private sale condition sometimes. It's um, not always, we have to ne negotiate this with the projects, but sometimes you have the opportunity to also get private sale conditions. And that's very interesting because then you have a even lower price for the tokens. Correct. Like whenever we go into negotiations with a different crypto project, we try to get the best deal possible for our community. This best deal could be with a very good IDO price, but sometimes because the, the projects that approach us, they have a specific token, tokenomics, how many tokens they want to sell in their seed phrase, how many tokens they want to sell in their private sales. And maybe they had a private sale around previously to our launch pad uh, sale, and they still have some allocation left. So then they approach us and then they tell us, hey guys, we have $50,000 worth of private sale tokens. And then we have an allocation of $100,000 or $200,000 worth of IDO tokens that we want to sell. And then if we get this opportunity to offer a private sale, this opportunity is offered only to our tier level five. This is why this is our VIP uh, tier level. Yeah. So that's also why there's um, yeah a big gap between the tier level four and tier level five, because yeah, as John said, you have here the VIP access as well sometimes. 
So yeah, that's that about the tier system. Now we come to the staking process. Um, as you can see here, there's already um, some peak tokens locked. That's nice. And um, here you can also see the current peak token price. And with the staking process, you can earn 20% APY in general. So that's pretty nice. But you also have the opportunity to also participate in our launchpad. And yeah, you definitely have to stake. So there's no option around it if you want to participate. And as I said, you will get the 20% APY as well. Green, you cannot just say there are some peak tokens staked on the launch pad already. Look at the number. We finally hit the $1 million cap. So worth uh, peak tokens worth $1 million are actively staked on our launch pad. That's a great number. And we hope to see this number increase even more after you watched our tutorial, because I know that you're going to start staking soon as well, because you want to get the 20% APY rewards as well. And you also want to participate in the ideals. In the launch press <laughs> and the first ideals, of course. <laughs> but Rui is coming to that in a minute. <laughs> yes, right. And if you want to stake your peak token here, you simply need to connect your wallet. And I mean, that's only a test wallet, so uh, that's why I don't have peak tokens here. And yeah, you just simply uh, type in your amount of peak tokens, which you would like to stake. You can also, yeah, um, switch this bar up. And yeah, as you can see here, you will get the 20%. As Jonas already said, we need to have the peak token on the Binance Smart Chain. And um, you also need BNB for transactions costs. So you need, for example, for the staking, but also for the registration process. After, uh, later on, you need definitely BNB in transaction, for the transaction costs. And you also need later on BUSD to, um, yeah, simply deposit and participate in their IDOs. So yeah, and here you will just see the stats, how many peak token you have earned and how many peak token you have currently staked. And also, if you want to withdraw peak tokens, we have a penalty system. So that means you have to pay um, peak tokens if you just stake it for a yeah, short peri period of time. And this means you can also see it here. If you stake your peak tokens for only two weeks, you have to pay a penalty fee of 30% of the amount of peak tokens which you have staked. And yeah, if you wait for four weeks, 20%, etc. And if you wait for longer than um, eight weeks, you don't have to pay any fees. So yeah, correct. The reason why we have these penalty fees is very simple because we do not want people to just stake peak token, participate in a project, unstake them, maybe sell them, and then rebuy them in the few weeks when we have the next project. We want people to stake for a certain period of time, and after that, if they want to withdraw, they can do that. We just want to avoid this back and forth, back and forth all the time, and that's why we have these penalty fees actively with our staking. Yes, right. So yeah, then I will go forward to the participating process. So how you can participate in the IDOs. So as I said, you need to first stake. That's important, that's the first, first step. And if you've done that, you can register and do the KYC. And um, we work for the KYC and AML with a software called BlockPass. And there you just, yeah, simply need to um, upload um, your national ID and have to take a picture of yourself and yeah, give details about yourself. So for example, where you live, your address, etc. And then you will get an email after 30 minutes that says, okay, you are registered, it's, everything is fine. And then you can verify your wallet. And after you've done all those three steps, you can also register yourself for the IDOs. So you can, uh, yeah, register for the whitelist. Yeah, just keep in mind that you need to do the staking first. You need to do at least staking of 1,000 peak tokens, and then you can register and do the KYC and also verify your wallet. The first three steps, allocation staking, register and KYC and verify wallet are steps that, are, that have to be generally be done on our launchpad. And then the register for sale is for each in the, for each project individually. But the first three steps is what you definitely have to do in order to participate. And then for each project, you can 
choose if you want to register yourself for a specific sale, yes or no. Yes, right, yeah. And yeah, now to come to the upcoming ideas and the ongoing one. So the first one started today, which is tangible. And if you click here, everything is not that ordered here. <laughs> Our developers will fix this hopefully soon. But um, if you click here, you can also find all the details about the sale the token. Also, we have here a description about tangible. But you can, of course, also find here their website and yeah, do your own research, of course. <laughs> and um, yeah, you can yeah. now, if you have done all the steps which we um, yeah, said before, you can click here just on register um, and confirm it with your MetaMask wallet and then you will be whitelisted. Yeah, scroll down a little bit, Arun, please. So every time when we offer a project at our pay DeFi Launchpad, there is this period which we call whitelisting period. Whitelisting means that you have to register for a sale. So the register, uh, the registration just opened today. So now you can register yourself for the project and then the registration will close at a certain time at a certain day, which you can actually see here in the middle. And then once this is closed, we have a few hours of period or maybe a night or a day of a period where nothing happens. And then on the next day, we will activate the sales period. The sales period will always be like a few days. And during that period, you will see your allocation that was allocated to you that you can buy. And then you have to deposit BUSD on Binance Smart Chain. And then you can actually buy the allocation that was allocated towards you. So you always have to register first and then wait until the sale opens and then you have to deposit the BUSD. And we have also here a minimum which you need to deposit. So you need to deposit 100 BUSD, T, BUSD um, to be able to participate in the sale. Yeah, maybe we can showcase um, something about the um, project itself, Doreen, maybe the team. Yeah, sure. So yeah, here's the team from Tangible. Um, they're very, I like them a lot because um, yeah, we called, of course, also with the team, also, for example, with Jack and Michael. And uh, Jack is a very successful entrepreneur. So he has founded um, many companies in the past. And um, yeah, I'm excited to work with all of them. And as you can read here also, he founded and sold Lime, so a company of him to Apple Cream. So that's very exciting. And he also had a social media company in the past. And by um, having this, the, he has also many contacts to influencers in the space. So to many crypto in, um, influencers. And I think this will give the project a big boost in the, um, yeah, in the next upcoming weeks and days. So I'm really excited about the team. And to come to the project itself. So wait a minute, Dream. Um, go back to the team for yeah. a second, please. Um, for us, it's very important that we look at the team, that we look at the tokenomics, that we have a lot of calls with the teams before we actually say, okay, this is a project that we want to have as an IDO. And the reason we are doing this, because we actually want to get uh, give our community only the best opportunities and the best projects. So we only offer the best projects that we can get our hands on, let's say like this. So currently we are in contact with over 20 different projects that want to get listed on our launchpad. And every day we get five to 10 more applications and we already declined a lot of applications because they were just not good projects. So we are very proud that Tangible is actually our first project that we can list and that is such a good project. And we have a special guest today because he already joined Doreen. <laughs> um, we don't want to talk too much about Tangible ourselves because actually we just invited uh, Michael to our Zoom meeting here. So he's going to do the introduction about Tangible himself. So let's see if Mike is available. He just uh, muted himself. Yes, yeah. there he hey guys, is. How's it going? Good morning or good, good afternoon. Yeah, good morning. What time is it at your place right now, Mike? Uh, 6, 6.30? 6.30 in the morning. Oh my wow. God. Wow, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're looking fresh for this time. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, as, as you can shake, see, shake off the sleepies and uh, get into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have a few customers uh, joining us from India, so it's already oh, wow. nighttime in India. So we have like people from all around the globe, from Los Angeles all the way up to India. That's like pretty cool. 
<clears throat> so yeah, Michael, before we start talking about your project, maybe you can give us a little introduction about your project if you want to. Uh, yeah, uh, just a short introduction. You kind of want me to go through like... Um, yeah, about the idea. What is tangible? What can the people yeah, sure. expect? So uh, basically like tangible is, uh, is a marketplace for NFTs that are backed by physical goods. So uh, we're a marketplace where people can buy NFTs backed by gold, um, investment class wine, um, luxury watches, and also real estate. Okay. So instead of investing into a stable coin, I can invest into a tangible NFT, which is then backed by real world asset, right? Yeah, it, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. So I think that like when, when you look at sort of uh, the market right now, if, if you have crypto, you're, you're either probably um, investing just strictly into some sort of token or coin, either your blue chips or some, some other sort of like um, smaller cap coins. Uh, you might be doing DeFi or you're probably like exploring or playing in the NFT space. And a lot of the NFTs that you're looking at right now are, um, you know, to some extent, sort of like hype driven or, or market driven product. There isn't necessarily like intrinsic value behind uh, a, a PFP image per se. Some of the projects have certainly like added utility in and you can you can talk about the quality of the art and other things like that. But ultimately, like there isn't necessarily like an established like true value behind behind those goods. They're, they're still just JPEGs. And so, you know, we're, we're looking at this as an opportunity for people to use the crypto that they already have to invest in these categories that have established real world value. So you can sort of understand what a Rolex costs now and you can do some rough figures of what it might cost in the future. Same with these investment class wines, same with like properties and same with gold to some extent as well. So I think because of this, we, we feel like these are pretty sound sort of investments. Um, investments. They're also like different from what people have been able to invest in in the past. Um, and, and third, they're sort of like uncorrelated to crypto. So we see that crypto basically follows Bitcoin. Bitcoin does this, everything else kind of cascades and follows. I think right now you're kind of seeing even with like equities markets, right? Uh, at least in the United States, like the stock market does one thing, Bitcoin follows, crypto follows that. So like these, uh, these asset classes tend to kind of move at their own pace, a little bit independent from everything else. Um, so your point on stables, I think that like, you know, stable farming, a lot of people are doing that right now. A lot of people are kind of considering it given this sort of a little bit of uncertainty in the market overall, both in crypto and the macro. Um, and one second, Three, maybe you don't show the website why he's talking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry, continue, Michael. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And so like, you know, just, just to be totally transparent. So we're, we're kind of looking at, at our products, especially like real estate, uh, these real estate fractions as an alternative to stable coins. So, I think like consider the yield that you'll earn off of these, consider the appreciation that you'll earn off of these closer and more in line with what you might find um, working with stables or sort of like maybe a more conservative DeFi strategy versus like a hundred X or a thousand X that you might be looking for on certain tokens or, or NFT projects. I do think that like in, in doing so, you're, you're sort of saying like, you know, I want to invest in these asset classes that have a proven track record of success. And I'm, and I'm going to sort of sacrifice massive gains for the stability and the consistent sort of earn that you can get from this stuff. So right now, just as an example, we're looking at real estate um, as giving customers somewhere between a 12 and 15% yield annually. That's coming from the rental income. So as an owner in a, uh, of a fraction of a piece of property, you're entitled to a piece of the rental income every month. So the properties that we have are all rented. Um, the tenants are paying on time that rent profit gets distributed to all the NFT holders of that real estate fraction. So that'll be somewhere in the range of like maybe 9% in rent every year, uh, uh, yeah, in rents every year. And then an additional maybe 5% on top of that of property appreciation. That's, so that's kind of how we're looking at um, sort of yield on properties, gold, watches, wine, uh, they all kind of follow something similar because there's a market out there for these products, we sort of know what a case of Petrus is trading at or, or what it's being sold for, right? So a case of yeah. you know, 2010, 2005 Petrus now and what it costs, whatever. And then we can sort of look at sort of what that market price is doing, how that's moving up over the course of the year or two years or four years or whatever it is. And we'll adjust and reflect the price of the NFT based on that. So basically you're earning yield and appreciation because the underlying assets are appreciating. And we know that because that's what people are actually paying for them in the market. We know what a role like state trust is being sold for. So we can reflect that price in the NFT. 
Yeah, it sounds very good. I really like the idea of connecting the real world assets with cryptocurrencies and not having so many hurdles and knowledge or to not have so many hurdles and knowledge in this specific space because I wouldn't know which kind of sneaker I could buy in order to have like a stable investment. But when you have your analysts and your experts with that, that's something where I can rely on, where I can lean back and, you know, like let you guys do the most of the work. So what, yeah. what would you say, what can investors um, do when they buy the tokens? Like when they participate in our, in our launch pad, what is the first things that they could do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, all, all the people participating in the launch pad are going to be receiving um, a, a, actually a different type of NFT. It's called a 3-3 plus NFT. Um, this is essentially a locked token position. So what this NFT says is you are entitled to X amount of tokens. There's also a multiplier that's applied to these NFTs. So um, when you're purchasing your IDO, you're you're getting, I think it's like a $2 per token, correct? And then there's yes. um, everybody participating in the IDO is entitled to a 25X multiplier. So you're going to start with, say you start with um, 50 US dollars. That'll start as like one token in your in your NFT. And then, I'll, um, sorry. 25 yeah, sorry, one, yeah, one token in the NFT, and then that multiplies over time to 25. At the end of the period, you have 25 tokens at the original IDO price of 50 US dollars. So that's like generally how the multiplier works um, for, for people that are participating in the IDO. Now, what this NFT entitles um, the holders to is, well, two things. One, you're, you're holding tokens. So as the price action of the token um, fluctuates and, and, you know, we're expecting, you know, hopefully like improves over time, you're sort of obviously taking advantage of the price act, the positive price action of the token. Uh, secondly, and I think like more interestingly, holding locked tokens entitles all of our holders to a share of marketplace fees. So we're, we're, we're set up as a DAO. Um, every transaction in the marketplace is charged a two and a half percent charge. That, that's similar to what you see in the rest of the category. OpenSea charges two and a half percent. Instead of that money going just into the bank account for the project, what we're doing every week, all the marketplace fees that are charged are distributed back to the holders of the locked uh, of the locked tangible token. So whatever percentage of the total locked tokens you hold in your NFT, you're entitled to that same percentage of uh, the revenue fee uh, of the a revenue share for marketplace fees. So we're apportioning six, two thirds of the fees are directly distributed right back to token holders via USDC um, revenue share. You just have to go in every week and claim your revenue share. The final third is actually used to buy, uh, buy and burn tokens. So we'll buy tangible tokens at market price and we'll destroy them. That hopefully creates a deflationary mechanism where the price of the token goes up, we hope. We can't make predictions. We can't make predictions on price, but obviously, like that's the sort of um, stabilization mechanism. That's that you're like, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. behind it. Um, I, and I think that probably like some of your uh, IDO participants are asking, like, why do I need to get a lock token position? Like that that you know, I want to be able to participate in the IDO and, and then and then sell it if I see see improvement and, and exit that position. Of so I think they, they want to flip, yeah. Yeah, they want to flip it, right? And so I think that there's there's two sort of like answers to that. Uh, first, I'll give you the way that you can exit your position early if you want, because probably people are most interested in that. Um, I mentioned that these are NFTs. There's a place in the marketplace where you can sell your token position. So because you've got an early, you have a really low token price because you're locked up for the maximum amount of multipliers. These token positions should be pretty desirable to other investors who want to participate in the tangible product, who want to have a position in our token with the max multiplier. So you can sell that entire financial position to someone else in the marketplace, just like you would sell a regular NFT. You can set the price for um, what you want to sell it for. Um, to give you guys some rationale on why we're locking up tokens, I think that like we went back and we looked at a lot of the IDOs over the past, uh, I don't know, se several months, year, whatever it is. We looked at a lot of the IDOs from, from big partners. And I think like when you, when you do that, you see a, a pretty similar um, pattern in the, in the tokens, right? Like there's a big spike in the beginning and then they kind of just trail off, right? Definitely, yeah. And we've seen that with different projects, of course, yeah. Yeah, and it's like... It's not great for it's not great for retail and it's not great for community. I think the mechanics of what you're basically seeing is you're seeing VCs and you're seeing the team um, who have access to tokens early at a really low price. 
The project is launching with low liquidity. So a little bit of price action is driving up the price. VC's team are dumping their tokens and they're selling it off under retail. They're selling it off on community, the price tanks. And, and essentially the project is dead at that point, right? There's not, yeah. there's no incentives for the teams to continue to build. They're already rich. There's no incentive for the VCs to help the teams craft a product that has good market fit and use their expertise in the space to help create a, a product that people are going to want to use because they've already been paid. And now the community and the retail investors who came in and have been passionate about the project, well, now they're suffering big losses and have a, just kind of a down only price chart. So our intent behind locking up tokens is essentially to uh, prevent this. People sure. who are people the investing period is a very common thing in, in projects. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like people participating in the IDO, VC team, everybody has their tokens locked up for the exact same period of time. There's no preferential treatment for anybody. Anybody's free to sell their NFT in that token position whenever they want. But we're trying to create a situation where there isn't negative price action at the start that destroys the project, that destroys the community, that, that destroys retail investors, and hopefully sets us up for long-term success and a tokenomic structure that is moving up in, in the right direction. And I mean, you're, you're getting like benefits from just holding the tokens and the NFT because you're actually getting paid the fees. Correct. The marketplace you were talking is the marketplace which uh, Doreen is showing right now, right? The tangible store? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a very, very rough mock of it, but yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Maybe, Doreen, you can show our launch website again and the sales periods. So, yeah, people can register right now for the sale. The registration closed on the April 27th, and then the sales period starts um, on the 28th until May the 1st. And then after that, you will do the distribution of the NFTs, right? Correct. Yeah, I think the NFTs will be distributed by, I think, start uh, by, by like midnight UCC, I think on the second. Everything has to wrap up on the first. The project launches on the second. So all the, basically all the NFT positions are distributed on, on the second. I'm just not, I'm not entirely sure of like the exact timeline based on yeah. like different, different geographies, basically. Yeah, okay, perfect. Mm, let's see, do, do we have some questions from the community? Um... Somebody asked when and where would it be possible to buy or sell the token? And do you know which exchanges it's going to be? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, the tokens are going to be available for launch on SushiSwap at, at launch on SushiSwap. That'll be the only place that you can um, you can get tokens um, outside of sort of like an IDO process or an ILO process as we're calling it. Um, just... Uh, just so that everybody know, like the, the project runs on Polygon, so you'll need to be on the Polygon chain on, on Sushi in order to sort of uh, swap your tokens for, um, uh, for for tangible. I will say that like if you're going to go that route, you can you can still sort of take advantage of the locking mechanism. So if you go on day one and you just want to buy a couple tokens on Sushi, you'll still have the opportunity to lock them up with a 25x multiplier. Now, like our expectation is retail pricing is going to be significantly higher than IDO pricing. So the people that buy at retail, they'll actually get a true uh, multiplier. If you buy one token, by the end of the time, it'll be worth 25 tokens. Um, so that's sort of a distinction between like purchasing at retail and purchasing uh, through the IDO. But again, like there's not going to be a, a, a ton of liquidity at, at the start. And so I think our expectation is that like token price is going to is going to go up and there's not going to be a tremendous amount of sell pressure, almost only buy pressure. So that's sort of like the difference in how you can approach this, but you can certainly just buy tokens on Sushi, go to the website, lock them up anywhere from one to four years, uh, choose get the multiplier associated with that, and then move forward with uh, incurring your percentage of revenue share from the marketplace fees. Yeah. Okay. One other thing to note: the uh, the multipliers reduce in uh, in size every day. So 25x is only available the first day of launch. Then it reduces, I think, to like 22. Then it kind of continues to trickle down. At the end of the first week, um, it'll be, I think, somewhere, I think about 20 is the max multiplier, maybe a little bit less than that. And then it continues to step down, I think, like day by day or week by week going forward. Okay. Um, but one other thing to note, because it's just important, the locked tokens, they do release over time. So like you will see like there's a, basically a bonding curve. Um, and as you get closer to the end, tokens will start to release by block on Polygon. So you'll start to see rewards incur in your uh, in your in your account. Basically, on Tangible, you'll have oh, I can remove these tokens absolutely free, no problem. Um, and you can go off and, and swap those if you want. Okay, sounds very good. And the good thing is the 
multiplayer automatically activates itself for the IDO participants because right. they are the early stages yeah. investors. Yeah, that's very right. good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much for this insight. Doreen, do you have any other question that you want to ask him right now? Um, not a question, but what I really like about Tangible is also if you, for example, buy a TNFT, so for example, from a watch, it's really backed by the a watch in the real world. So if you burn the TNFT later on, the watch can also be delivered to your home. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that is, that is correct with, with the watches and the wine. I mean, oh, wow. That's really cool, I think. So the watch really does exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the watch does exist. You, you do own the watch or you do own the watch. Like that, that only works for people that have the entire TNFT. If you have a fraction, obviously you can't. Yeah, sure. You, you can't claim a, a link in the watch. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, uh, there's, there's definitely that pe the opportunity for people that are buying the whole TNFT. Um, one other thing to mention since you brought up the TNFT is... Um, when you buy a TNFT in the marketplace, uh, when you mint one initially, or when you buy one that was pre-minted or by a fraction, um, in the minting process, a part of the purchase price is returned to that TNFT in a locked token position. So if you, when a, when a case of wine is minted, for example, an NFT for a case of wine, 10% of that purchase price is applied uh, back into that NFT in the same way the three, three NFTs work. So even though you're buying a TNFT of wine, you're actually still getting a portion of locked tangible that goes with it. You'll still get some revenue share from the marketplace fees as well. It doesn't necessarily show up the same way as a three, three NFT. It's sort of obscured by the TNFT, but essentially the mechanism is all the same. You get the benefit of the appreciation for your wine. You also get the benefit of your tangible token appreciating. You also get the revenue share. So we kind of call that earn plus because when you buy a TNFT, there's basically three ways to earn off of that. Very interesting. Man, this is like such a well thought business idea. It's a, yeah, listen, like um, I've spent a lot of time in our Discord lately answering <laughs> questions from the community. Like I fully appreciate the fact that this is, this is different that for a lot of people, the tokenomics can be a little bit complicated, that there's a lot of moving parts in here. So I would say like, there's a, a pretty good art, medium article that you can find um, through our socials or on our tangible medium um, that explains the 3.3 plus NFT, I think in a pretty good, uh, pretty good sort of um, manner. So definitely check that out. Check out the docs. You can jump in Discord if you guys have questions or, or hit us up on Twitter or someone or somewhere else. I, I think like, um, it's okay if you're sort of like scratching your head a little bit right now. Um, I think we, we've all, we're all very familiar with it. We've thought it out. We've been like living and breathing this for the last several months, but, um, you know, I think we we feel like we built a project that has long-term value and, and lasting success, but what comes with that is a little bit more complex than buy NFT moon sell, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, so you just uh, give it like a, a more sense, like than just like flipping. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm trying to think what else uh, what else I can mention. Um, there there is this thing called an instant liquidity engine on the site. Uh, this goes back to the notion that like these are backed by real world assets. So because we always know what they're worth, and because we always know that there's a market for these products, there's always a market for a Rolex or a case of wine or whatever. We'll buy it back, the TNFT or the fraction back from a customer at any point in time. So if you aren't satisfied with the price in the marketplace, you can sell it for, we'll buy it back from you at a fixed rate. That's a, a little bit of a reduction on the market price. But if your if your product, project has already gone up in price or your, your items already gone up in price, then you should be hopefully in the clear. You've also had that time to take in uh, your percentage of marketplace fees. So there's a lot. That, of that's very good because then I lose the risk of having my my assets like uh, locked in the kind of like liquidity that I cannot get out. Yeah, exactly. That, like there, there's very, right. It, unlike a PFP, there's no situation where you become illiquid or tied into this. We will always buy yeah. the fraction back from you guys. Um, I, I, once again, because the underlying assets have real value versus like, there was a PFP project, everybody loved it. Then everybody decided, eh, we don't like it so much anymore. No one wants to buy it. And because it isn't like a, because it's only just an image, there's not a, a ton of like, there's not much you can do with it going forward. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Cool, yeah. Thank you very much. Much highly appreciate all yeah, the course. information that you gave us and to our community, because now we can share it again on Twitter, do, do the emails and everything, and then say, hey, if you want to get, inside information from tangible just watch the replay and yeah 
Yeah, and, and go, like, so go check out like check out our Twitters. I think we have a lot of really good content up right now. I think we're we're trying really hard to make sure that everybody kind of understands the product, understands the opportunity. So it's all broken down into some pretty like bite-sized pieces. So so definitely if you're curious, go off. There's there's a ton that you can learn in, in hopefully a pretty like digestible manner. You can put a list of information together like the Twitter and the medium article, and then I can put it afterwards in the video description. And then people can just watch the replay, check it out the video description, have all the links available. Yeah, absolutely. I'll send you over some resources. Okay, cool. Yeah. Then, yeah, thank you very much for your time. And I would say, Mike, you're, you you can leave if you want to, and Doreen will yeah. wrap this up. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to take off. Uh, but uh, thank you, guys. Um, we're really excited to be working with you. I think we've had a great experience with Peak DeFi. I think you guys are like just an awesome group of people. Um, and we're really looking forward to, to bring this product to your community. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Well, have All a good right. uh, have a good rest of your day. Um, I'm gonna go get some more coffee. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Thank you. you. Bye. Okay, guys. Yes, this was Michael from Tangible. We are very happy to be working with them. As you can see, he's an awesome guy, and the whole team that we met from them so far have like left an excellent impression on our team. So we are really happy with them, and we were really looking forward to the IDO. So. We hope that you got some information from him and from us about the Peak DeFi Launchpad. If you have more questions, feel free to ask us in our Telegram group. And as you have seen, um, I think in the first uh, page, it was like a little bit of disordered with the letterings and the numbers. So yeah. our developers are still working on the website. Sometimes there's like some buttons not working properly, but just give us an influence saying, hey guys, This button, I think, is not working properly, and we will fix it immediately. I mean, we are checking our website every day, and the developers are working on it. But every now and then, there's a little bit of a bug or an issue coming in, and then we will fix it ASAP. So, yes. Doreen, do you want to say anything more? Have we missed yeah. something? So, um, for Changeable, here's also the website link, as I already showed you. And I think there's also... Okay, actually not. <laughs> But there you can also find on their website, so all the information about Tangible. So they have here down there their docs and you can read about it, their white paper and about their tokenomics because they're, they're very special. So yeah, definitely check their website out and um, yeah, participate in the IDO. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I also want to show you our next project which is also already on our website. Yes. This is BioWorkers. And yeah, I will just show you the website a bit and um, yeah, tell you what it's all about. So um, BioWorkers is a game to play, a uh, play to earn game. <laughs> and it's like, you can imagine it like a combination of the two most famous games out there. So Temper Run and Hill Climb Racing. And in the game, you can earn their token, so the BIOS token. And if you're also interested in this project, you can also watch here the clip. And you can also see the yeah, graphic details and everything in the video. So the quality is very, very good. So it's the same quality like you can see here in the video. So check the video definitely also out. And what I really like about this game is also that they have a very um, yeah, well-defined tokenomics. So they're also very uh, thinking long-term. It's not like with the normal tokenomics. So for example, with Axie Infinity, I mean, they also had their success, but um, their tokenomic mechanism is more well thought and more oriented for the long-term. So that's why I'm a really big believer also of this project, because it's not that normal this kind of tokenomics but yeah i don't want to go into details now but it's also yeah. a very good project and yeah if you have time you'd also need to check that out <laughs> but we're going to announce more information after the tangible token sale ended and then we're going to release more information of bioworkers so that you have all the time you need in order to prepare yourself with, or to engage with bioworkers as well We just want to tell you again that at Peak Defi Launchpad, we try to, or we try, we will show you only the best projects that we get our hands on so that you always know that we do a very good and very high quality due diligence before we list a project because we don't want to 
offer something to our community just because we have to offer something. We will offer something only when we have a good project. And only then when we think and when we personally invest into the project, that is when we are going to offer it. Like we wouldn't offer a project on our launchpad if we wouldn't participate in the IDO as well. So this is like our own ambition that we only offer where we would invest ourselves in with our private money. And that's when we can offer to our community. And this is how our values work and how we try to work as a Peak DeFi Launchpad. Yeah, and maybe totally you can show, right. Maybe you show the website again for the last time. Yeah. I also registered for Tangible today, so. <laughs> <laughs> you already registered. Perfect. <laughs> yes. So the registration should be open now. It should be working. If there's a small bug, just let us know and we will try to fix it ASAP. And yes, if you, yeah, because I'm, um, yeah, it's the last thing, maybe some people had issues with the KYC process. If you do have issues with the KYC process, please check your spam folder because you have to enter your email address and your uh, profile information. And if BlockPass for some reason does not accept your verification, you will get an email within 30 minutes after starting the KYC process telling you what went wrong and why they declined your verification. And then you get a link where you can fix your profile and upload all the necessary information. And after that, they will review your KYC. So yes, if you have any issues with that, just um, check out your email spam folder. And other than that, connect with us on Telegram, connect with us on Twitter, if you have any more questions. And yeah, I think that's it, right, Doreen? Yeah, do we have any more questions in the chat? um no we just had one question if it's possible to register now for the sale but yes it is possible other than that we had good feedback and yes thank you everybody for watching our pig defi live thank you everybody for joining us and yes i was jonas mamut cco from pig defi this was doreen hein one of our top analysts at pig defi and yeah i wish you all a nice day <laughs> nothing more to add also bye 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 guys <laughs>